it's it. Mm hmm. Oh, he works with me. Papa saw. You know what I'm saying? Jamaican gospel <clears throat> artist. Gotta go forward. Yeah, because I moved it back in the middle. Okay. We are kosher. One. Oh my goodness. Like a Hebrew national hot dog. Oh no. Sunday. 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 Yep. July 16th. Um, first, just a couple quick announcements here. One is October 15th is a tentative date. I've been given, I had a conversation last night with Apostle Shelley, uh, tentative date for my consecration to the office of Apostle. Uh, and it will be at the Holy Temple service room. So once uh, I have more conversation with him about that, and we actually confirm that date, and I will get the information out to everyone else. Um, on the trip to Africa, um, the original time frame that was set for October to November is not going to happen. Uh, reason being that not enough people signed up to go on the trip. So um, that could happen. So we have a way around that. And the way around that is the date will be in February. Um, with another group date in February uh, if I remember right I had a meeting last night with um, Bishop Hawthorne and if memory serves it is the I think the 6th to the 15th somewhere in that ballpark I know it was 10 days um, I have to get the exact date again from him he's supposed to send me all that information um, but um that's when the date will be, and the price will be uh, $39.95, all inclusive. So, that's what's happening with the trip to Kenya, it is $3,995, all inclusive, from what I have been told thus far. If there are changes in that, I'll, I'll let you know once I get more information, and all of the pertinent information, I will pass that on as well. All right, those are just the two orders of business I had to deal with this morning until we get into this word. Uh, this afternoon, the text will be from Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 31 to 39. Romans chapter eight, verses 31. 39. Here in this epistle letter to the Roman church, the Apostle Paul gives a message that identifies a particular characteristic about born again believers. He writes this way I the Amplified, what then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect when it is God who justifies, that is, who puts us in right relation to himself, who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those who God has chosen. Will God, who acquits us, who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God actually pleading as he intercedes for us? Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation 
or calamity and distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword. Even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. For I am persuaded beyond doubt, am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Brother, the Lord has blessed this afternoon. I want yes. to use this text and extract from it a topic. The topic being indestructible. Indestructible. Lord, as I once again, your servant who comes this day before you, humbled in your presence, asking for your mercy and forgiveness in the name of Jesus, those things that you find within me that are displeasing to you, I ask that you remove them, wash me, cleanse me, and purify me, that I might be fit and worthy for this, your service. Now, God, use this vessel submitted unto your will, God, that it might speak these words to your people, that they would receive from it all that you desire for them. And it is in the name of your son, Jesus, that I pray. Say amen. Amen. Indestructible. What does indestructible actually mean? The word itself indestructible. A textbook definition of that word would be something that cannot be destroyed. Something that cannot be rendered useless, unfit, cannot be removed from existence. Indestructible. There is a thing that exists that is absolutely indestructible in physics. That thing being energy. In physics, there's a law called the law of the conservation of energy, which says that energy can never be created nor destroyed. That it can only take another form. That's within a closed system. I submit to you that we live in a closed system. That's right, amen. See, God created the universe as a closed system, mm -hmm. complete, mm -hmm. which means nothing is added to it and nothing is taken from it. Things within it only change their form. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere with this. Things only change their form. They are never, at least in God, never destroyed. The only thing that's ever destroyed is anything that God wills to destroy of his own hand. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's added is anything that God ever adds of his own hand. But when God created everything, if we read the creation narrative from Genesis, he says he created this and it was good, full stop. So he created the heavens and the earth and said that it was good, full stop. Mm -hmm. He created the grass and the plants and it was good, full stop. He created all the creeping things and the things that swam in the ocean and the things that crept under the earth and the beast that of the field, full stop, and it was good, right? Amen. Yeah. And then he created us and then he said, very good, full stop. Nothing added to it, nothing removed from it, because it was complete as God had designed it at creation. That's right. Yes. So we live in a closed system. Thank you, Lord. What happens with us along the way through life and Life's trials and tribulations and traumas, 
we began to develop this belief that the system is not closed, that things can be removed or added to it, and that primarily things can be removed from it because we, as we go through life, the things that we own age and we replace them and we age and things begin to happen to our bodies. I speak for myself when I say I have aged and things do not function as they did, say, just 20 years ago. And so when those things happen, when the, the aches and the pains come and well, the, 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 the visitor comes to my house and I call the Itis twins, Burr and Arth. <laughs> Burr and Arthur. I know those twins, Bursitis and Arthritis, the Itis twins. Mm -hmm. Those things come visit me quite regularly now at this age. Mm -hmm. Now I've got this condition with uh, edema and that affects my lower legs and my feet where they swell up and, and my eyesight isn't what it used to be and, uh, and, and, and that nearly every joint has Rice Krispies in it, snap, crackle, and popping. <laughs> and so those things happen to us over time and we begin to feel like we are destructible, that we can be destroyed. But when you get on the Lord's side and become a born-again believer, you, no matter how you feel, no matter what attacks you, no matter uh, uh, what comes up against you, no matter what pressures you may be under, you have been made indestructible, something that can only change form, not be removed or destroyed, not being rendered useless. Because when we read the word of God, we understand that though this flesh is finite, we yet have a portion of us that has a home with God in eternity. Amen. Amen. Therefore, anything that is eternal cannot be destroyed. It must be indestructible. And the Apostle Paul writes here to the church of Rome about just exactly how indestructible you and I are. He asks the question, first of all, who can levy a charge against us? Who can accuse us? He says, if God is for us, who are our enemies? Right. Yes. Who can they even be? The problem with so many of us today is that we focus on our enemies and yet preach and, 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 and agree with an amen of this phrase that, that we've come so accustomed to in our culture that if I hold my peace, and let the Lord fight my battles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when battles come, we have this innate propensity to want to fight the battle ourselves. Yeah. We, 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 we want to push back and speak back. And it's like, Remind, and sometimes it reminds me of a cartoon character from a child who every time somebody would put him up, put him up. But I thought the Lord was fighting your battle. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was hold your peace. Now let me let me explain to you, because everybody talks about holding your peace, and I've explained to you what that really entails. Because some people think it means just stand there and be silent, and it doesn't. I just said something that just messed up somebody's theology. <laughs> Facebook family, I just messed up somebody's theology. It doesn't mean always stand there and be silent. There's a time to be silent, but it doesn't always mean that. Holding your peace simply means this. I won't be moved out of my appropriate position. Doesn't mean I became a punk. Doesn't mean I became a doormat, but I refuse to be removed 
from my appropriate assigned position. That means if it's necessary for me to speak back, I will, but it's how I speak back that matters. And that is, I refuse to become argumentative for the sake of an argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can speak authoritatively. I can speak firmly. But I refuse to allow you to draw me into or insert myself into a senseless argument. That's what holding your peace is. And when you let the, and then when you add, let the Lord fight my battle, we know this from the Bible, but we rarely pay attention to it. The Spirit Himself will give us what to say. What to say. If we have to speak at all. Because there's another thing, if we choose to remain silent, there's an old proverb that says silence is golden, and there's truth in that because uh, if they want to argue, I say this all the time when I teach conflict res resolution. In conflict resolution, if you keep your mouth shut, who stands there and argues with themselves? <laughs> they want to argue and you just say nothing. No matter how much they want to argue, sooner or later they're going to run out of gas because you're not arguing back. That's right. You're not feeding the fire. Right. Amen. So he asked that question, who is our enemy? Who can possibly be our enemy if God is for us? Who can bring a charge against us? That's right. And he even piles on, he says, will God himself charge us? The one that makes us right? Will Jesus, the one that God crucified for us, will he charge us? The one he crucified to make us be right with him, will he charge us? And both questions have an obvious answer of no. So then he adds on and he says, well, we, we have sufferings and afflictions and we have trials and tribulations and we have traumas and we have calamities and persecutions and hungers and destitution and peril and warfare and all sorts of dangers seen and unseen and powers and principalities and will any of that remove us separate us distance us from the one thing that makes us indestructible which is the love of God through Christ Jesus will any of those things be able to separate us from the very thing that has caused us as believers to be indestructible now that's a question that you have to answer for yourself because I say this to get to this point Your indestructibility is directly correlated to your connectivity. I'm going to say it again so you can understand it. Let me break it down for you and you really feel it. Your indestructibility is only directly correlated, directly tied to it, equal to your connectivity. Meaning, you're only indestructible so much as you are connected to Christ. That's right. Your relationship with him is what makes you indestructible. Not your relationship with anything else. Let me help you understand this better. In my military career, I've seen many things that were considered virtually indestructible become absolutely destructible. I have seen Nearly every type of vehicle you imagine, all the way up to tanks, completely destroyed. And they were thought to be virtually indestructible. I've seen buildings leveled to the ground that were considered to be virtually indestructible. You know, in California, there were buildings that they call earthquake 
proof. They had to change that to earthquake resistant because nothing is earthquake proof. You've all heard of these things probably somewhere along the way. A bulletproof vest or bulletproof glass or bulletproof armor for vehicles and such. And let me help you out. Nothing is absolutely bulletproof. They are bullet resistant is the, the actual correct nomenclature for them. Bullet resistant because a large enough round with a large enough charge behind it will penetrate the armor. So you walk around with a vest on thinking I'm bulletproof. If I hit you with a high enough caliber round, it's no longer bulletproof. Don't believe me, do the research for yourself. They're only bullet resistant. Even the glass, they call bulletproof glass. No, it's not. It's bullet resistant. If I hit the same spot enough times with a round or I hit the spot with a high enough caliber round, that glass is useless. It can be destroyed. It can be rendered useless and ineffective. But the one thing that will never be made useless or ineffective is the Spirit of God. God Himself cannot be rendered useless or ineffective. It's the love of God through Christ Jesus that makes you indestructible. Now, let's go back to the, the, the law of the conservation of energy because here's what. what, what, what Atheistic physicists don't want to acknowledge. Hmm. They love the law of the conservation of energy. That the first law of the conservation of energy is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. The first law of God, hello, I'm going somewhere with you down here. The first law of God is that He can neither be created nor destroyed. That's right. God is self-created and self-sustained. Mm -hmm. And there is no end to him, so he cannot be destroyed. That's right. Amen. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. And he knows the end from the beginning. Yes, he does. He is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. So what the physicists don't want to acknowledge is what you call energy, I just call God. What you call energy, I just call Yahweh. The, your, your conservation of energy is my conservation of the Almighty. Yeah. But they few, refuse to see the parallel in that. It must be what they say it is. But if they would ever serious, take a serious look at this, this text, this book, say, wait a minute, this whole conservation of energy thing, 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000, 6,000 years ago, let's go there, almost 6,000 years ago, before they had any knowledge of physics, they had this God that couldn't be created or destroyed. Well, because when you're a believer, you are not just, see, we, we, get, we, we, we get this messed up. We focus a lot on of God and not enough on in God, mm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are in him, yes. you are now in mm. the indestructible. That's right. Come on, bring it on. Thank you, Jesus. And he tells us that we were in him before mm -hmm. That's right. the world was. That's right. Amen. Amen. Before its foundations were even created. That's right. Oh, we were right. in him. Right. All we did when we became born again is we returned to him. That's right. Come on. Thank you. So you see, we were in the indestructible before the world ever was and we left the indestructible with our sin 
But when we gave up the nature of sin and confessed Jesus Lord, we were able to return to and reaccess the indestructible. Yeah. And now, because we are in the indestructible, we have been transformed by the renewing of our minds that we become indestructible because we get transformed into the very image of him. Did I make it make sense? Yeah, it made sense. Hallelujah. But, but that's only when you surrender completely. That's right. Nothing wavering yes. to his right. perfect will. That's right. Not the will of the world, but the will of God. Not your will. Not the will of man, not the will of your friends, not the will of your mama, your daddy, your cousins and them. <laughs> not the will, hold up, let me go deeper with this. Not the will of your church, not the will of your pastor. But the will of God himself. Yes. Hallelujah. This is when you become indestructible. Thank you, Lord. What the Apostle Paul does is draws us this illustration to show that once we submit to and surrender to the will of God, it is through the love of God, which is through Christ. You can't, oh, hold on. Let me, let me pause there and, and turn the corner because you can't just have the love of God without having Christ. That's right. There you go. That's it. Because it says that the love of God is dispensed to you through mm -hmm. the vehicle of Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I read it again. It says the love of God that is which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He God be your Lord too. So if He's not your Lord, well, you, you missed the boat. But but without Christ, you don't have the love of God. And he, the list he runs down. Do you realize that at some point in your life, you either have or will experience one of these things? I don't care how rich or poor you are. You either have experienced one or you have yet to experience one and will experience one of these things. The list again. Calamity, suffering and affliction, destitution, peril and sorrow. He says, not even death itself as long as you are in him, none of that can change the fact that you have been made indestructible. You see, we, we, we have these theories about these things. As a matter of fact, even 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 fantasies about things. I, I, I'm a, I was a fan and, and of comic books when I was a child. And I'm still a fan of some of the Marvel movies and the DC movies. And they, they always have in these comic book characters some sort of item or, 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 or substance that is called indestructible. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in the uh, Marvel Universe, it's, it's, it is interesting that there are multiple so-called fictional metal alloys that are considered indestructible. Now, let me educate you for some of those that don't know about the comic books. They, they, and, and if you go on YouTube, you can find out about this. And they, they, they rank the different out metal alloys as to which one is the strongest to the weakest. And, 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 and so they have this one metal that if you're a fan of Hawkman and Hawk Girl, it's called F metal. And that one is supposed to be uh, given certain magical properties that that metal has innate to it that makes that virtually indestructible. And then, and then you have another one. And if you're a fan of Wolverine, you know about adamantium. And adamantium is supposed to be indestructible. And you have another one if you're a fan of the Black Panther. And, 
in Wakanda forever, and, yeah. and you and, and you and you have their metal, which is vibranium. And vibranium is supposed to be indestructible, and, and all these things are supposed to be indestructible. They cannot be rendered useless. They cannot be removed from existence. And so you have all these fictional metals with these these properties that make them indestructible, but you have given a real, not a fictional, a real property that makes you indestructible. That means there was a part of you that has been made immortal. Yes. Yes. One of Paul's pistols, he writes that these, there's a time where this corruptible must put on any corruption and that yes. this mortal must put on immortality. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because in a moment in the twinkle of eye, we shall all be changed. That's all. right. Not some. Uh-oh, I just, oh. Come somebody, on. somebody, somebody got their toe hurt. Theology. Somebody got their toe hurt. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We shall all be changed. You've been made indestructible. Thank you, Lord. Summing this up, even he, Paul even goes on and says this. Not even breath, depth, width. That can't even do it. Mm -hmm. In other words, there is no distance too great for God to traverse. There is no place that is so deep he cannot enter. All right, that's right. That's right. Hmm. There is nothing so wide of an obstacle that becomes insurmountable to God. That's right. Amen. Because his love reaches you no matter where you are. There's no mountain that's high enough to get away from it. And no valley that's too low. No river too wide. You can't get away from the love of God. The only thing you can do to the love of God is accept it or reject it. That's the only thing you can do with it. You can't escape it though. Because even when you reject his love, he's still going to love you. That's right. Amen. I just said something there. Something. Somebody needs to catch on to. Even when you reject God's love, he's still going to love you. But here's the love. Here's the love. I had this conversation to speak because somebody didn't want to, want, want to grab onto that and they want to argue about it, but there's no argument with the word sales. And that's this. He's going to love you, but not the way you might want to be loved. That's right. <laughs> Come on, man. Make it play, Bishop. Make it play. Because whom he loves, he chastises. He chastises. He chastises. Yes, he does. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who God loves, he corrects, he whoops, he, he disciplines. Mm -hmm. In that text where it says, who God loves, he chastises, that's a word for discipline. That's right. Mm -hmm. So he's going to love you even when you reject him, but he's going to love you and you're going to be on punishment. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I remember my parents when I was young, they put me on punishment and I didn't like it, but they didn't stop loving me. My two sons, when they were young and they misbehaved, misbehaved they, they, they went on punishment and they didn't like it, but I didn't stop loving them. Nope. Anybody who's raised children knows that without discipline, they run amok, right? They sure do. 
they run roughshod over the place and act crazy and then you cry because you got to find bail money and or you got to find money for the funeral service. Am, am I talking right? Yeah, that sounds true. Mm -hmm. But if you discipline them, even though they don't like it, you know that you're prolonging their existence, right? Mm -hmm. Well, God loves you so much that he will put you on punishment so that you will have the opportunity mm -hmm. to move into the realm of indestructibility. Rather than you for, for you, to allow you to remain disobedient thinking that you're doing right. Mm -hmm. And continue to exist on the side that is destructible. So again, you, 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 you can be disciplined and it, hopefully at some point you will get it mm -hmm. of why you're being disciplined why these things are happening to you. Mm -hmm. And get on the right side with God and move into the land and the realm of the indestructible existence. Or you can stay over here and, and be rebellious and be angry and be contentious and, and, and stay and remain in the realm of what is destructible. And what is destructible? People of God, well, I'll tell you what's destructible. Heaven and earth will pass away. We know this is in the Bible. Heaven and earth will pass away. Yes, sir. It was read in our text today that the, the very elements themselves will melt with fervent heat. It was read, read, read in our scripture reading today, right? Yes. Will melt with, the elements will melt with fervent heat. How hot is that? It's so kind of hot. <sighs> I'm, I'm just going to call it extra hot. So heaven and earth will pass away. But God and his word is what will Amen. remain. That's right. Yeah. God and his word are what is indestructible, it cannot be rendered useless, cannot be removed from existence, cannot be made ineffective. You have to make the decision for yourself which realm you prefer to exist in. Mm -hmm. As for me, I choose indestructible. I, I just like the idea of just me and my silly self. I like the idea of not being able to be made useless, removed from existence, or rendered ineffective. I just like that idea for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I like I like being in my in the back of my, my, my imagination, Superman. You know, Superman was called indestructible, right? Mm -hmm. Invulnerable yeah. and indestructible Superman. So I like in, in, in my imagination, in my comic book imagination, being like Superman. But not because I'm from Krypton, but before I was, I'm from God. Not because I'm from a fictional planet, but because I am from the almighty creator. And not just from him, but I'm in him. Make the decision today if you have not made that decision. That you can continue to, to, to live life according to your own choosing, according to your own will and your own whim. You can you you can do that if you want to. And nothing may happen to you for decades. Nothing may happen for years. Nothing you might seem like you may even be well, very well off, and you think you're doing well and think you're living your best life, as they say now. Living your best life. You might, you might feel that way. But I can't 
can guarantee you that there's going to come a time where pressure is going to hit you with a sledgehammer in the face. Life will. Something in life is going to come along and be like, wham, this fucking garbage truck hits you out of nowhere. And you are going to wonder for the life of you where your help is. And friends and family won't be the solution. And all of your money and possessions won't be the solution. And anybody else you might know won't be the solution. And you are going to find yourself, as they see, feeling like you're at the end of your rope and there's not enough slack to tie another knot. Or you can get on God's side. Confess your life and your will. Surrender it all to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And when the garbage truck of life comes and slams into you, I'm not going to tell you to just bounce off because it won't. It's still going to hurt. And when you find yourself at the end of that rope and there's no slack to tie a knot, guess what? Don't worry. You won't have to worry about the knot or the rope. Because what you didn't notice until at that moment that you began to descend that there was a safety net called Jesus waiting right there to catch you. He won't let you fall to the point of destruction. He'll cocoon you in himself. Where though you may feel the pressure, you may experience the pressure, the pressure won't harm you. So if you, again, if you have not made that decision, make the choice today and make, make, make it today and make it soon. If you have not. For those that may be watching live, if you have not made that decision, you can today. All you have to do is reach out to any of us. You can reach out through our page here at Ring Word. You can reach out to our, our partners here at TNL. You can reach out to them. You can reach out to anybody that you see that is connected to our page that is in a ministry. You can reach out to them. We there are multiples that are connected to our personal page all over the all over the world, not just in this country or on the East Coast, but all over the world being connected, just reach out. You can contact us directly through this page or my personal page. Even. Contact anyone. Because as long as you are breathing, it is never too late. Then you too can be made indestructible. Amen. Father, we thank you for all that's been said and done here this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people and your presence with us as we prepare to depart this service and never in your presence. God, we ask that you to go with us, keep us, continue to bless us according to your perfect will. Oh, Father, bless every home represented here, uh, anointed from the roof to the foundation, that everything might be found well and in its place, nothing missing, nothing stolen, nothing broken, all as it should be. And Father, as we rest tonight, of God, he continue to speak with us that we might rise, giving you all glory, honor, and praise that is due you. It is in the precious name of your son, Jesus, that we pray, and we all say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.